tops from the bottom and bottom. <laughs> Get that fence fixed and keep those chickens on your own property from now on. I'm mending the fence, like you asked. Mr. Nazir, Weatherfield Council Environmental Health Officer. I understand you're keeping livestock on the property. We know full well who made the complaint, Councillor Metcalf. She is completely power crazy. I'm just jealous because I'm a pillar of this community. I'm not a violent person, but I would make an exception in your case. Have you purloined my lamp? Don't be ridiculous. It's a work of art. The leaning shed of Weatherfield. <laughs> I want a word with you inside. <laughs> oh, poor Tim, I love it. It's so lovely to see you. I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying, actually, the feud with, with the Yasmin and Sally. But I actually think they're quite similar. Do you think maybe she's met her match here I now? think they're very similar. I'd really like them to be friends, because I like the feuding. It's yeah. great. But eventually, I think they should sit down and have a little chat with each other about... You know, they're both from similar... You know, they've both had problems. They've both gone through terrible things. She lost her son and the things that Sally's gone through. So they have got a lot in common so who knows one but there's day that competition know. between there's that dare i say it snobbery isn't there there's that sort of yeah. one-upmanship going on uh, yeah. there as well I know, I love and you play that. that very well you do you play I that well i play that do. really well i'm starting to get worried yeah hi <laughs> sally the character 30 years right when you came yeah. into the show in 1986 uh, how has that developed bit by bit that slight superiority has crept in hasn't it well, I, do you know, there was a particular scene, Eamon, that we did, and it must have been, oh, 15 years ago. Yeah. And it was when Rosie was um, uh, wanted to be in the school play. And Sally goes to the teacher and um, she says, you know, why is my daughter not in the school play? She should be the lead. And, she... and then from then on, the writer suddenly went, Oh my yes. gosh, this yeah. is somewhere Tiger we could mom. go somewhere. Yeah, we yeah. could go in a different. And I've really enjoyed it. It's been really good, and the comedy and everything that comes with being snobby and mm -hmm. a counsellor. And well, actually, know. the counsellor has, you know, the, her becoming counsellor has taken it up a notch now, hasn't it? Because it's all about the mayor, and I'm at the town <laughs> hall today, and she's really loving that role. Is that going to any point? Because it's quite a comedy at the moment. Yeah. Is that going to change in any way? where she actually starts doing things in the community or...? Well, I would really like her to become a little bit more serious and do a few good things, cos I think she probably... I mean, she knows, she doesn't know what she's talking about. She's got no idea about anything about politics. So if somebody tells her something, she'll just go with what they say. But I would like something good to come out of it. You yes, know, that it's yes. just not all about her slapstick, really, yeah. that something... Mm -hmm. But, but do you know what I love about it? When you made your debut all those years ago, um, Hilda was on the street, um, Annie Walker, I think, mm. was still there as well. And I can see traits of the Annie Walker snobbery. And <laughs> Hilda, in her own way, was quite... She would always go around singing and, um, you know, she had... Hilda thought she was better than what she was. I mean, I really liked Hilda. That was oh, fantastic she was character. great. I think Sally is a mixture of Annie Walker and Hilda. Yes, I can see that, isn't yeah. she? Which is quite interesting. What was your first day like? Do you remember it? Oh, yeah, I was terrified on my first day. But I'd known Michael Lavelle because we'd done a drama group together when we were 13, so I did know him. And um, he put me at ease, and actually it went really well, and I really enjoyed it. And but didn't they dress you as a punk originally? Well, somebody had the idea that you would be a bit punky. Yeah, it was one of the makeup girls, and she said, "Why don't?" Because Mary was in EastEnders at that time. We thought, "Why don't we take Sally?" You know, she can be a punk. So I had all the black makeup and black lips, and then. Michael said, oh, I don't think Kevin would go out with a punk, so... <laughs> <laughs> OK, so I went back to makeup and washed um, it all off. According to the newspaper reports I was reading yesterday, Michael is amongst a, a group of actors. I mean, great news for us, there's going to be another episode of Corey during the week, but big workload for the actors, and um, the newspapers are saying that he was making representations on behalf of some of the actors to say, look, how are we actually going to work this out? Is there worries about how you're actually going to practically do this? Well, I think the schedules will all completely change, but the good thing is that we'll have another story strand. So, you know, we have got a, quite a large cast, so it will mean that we can run one more story against the other three, gotcha. four stories we've so got. So more people be can be involved. It's like a football team. You can use more of the people who were, mm. would be in the reserve team or the B team or whatever. Yeah. And I gonna... have to say, I'm delighted. I'm a massive Corey fan, so any, bring on all the episodes for me. Oh, um, while so you're here, I you must... would not believe, my, I can get nothing on my Sky Planner. <laughs> 
nothing. <laughs> why does anybody need 72 episodes of Coronation Street? Why don't you just wait? I've, I've had a binge because I've been catching up over, I've been away on holidays. So oh, it's been so good, oh, hasn't it? Very good. I um, must ask you while you're here because I know you're doing a charity bike ride I am. Um, in September um, and this is for your charity, Breast Cancer Charity. Yes, Prevent Breast Cancer. Yeah. Uh, which is prediction, protection and preventing. Yeah. Um, it's a wonderful charity. So um, I lost a dear friend in April, Morag Silla, um, who was only 46 and um, decided, my husband and I, who's also called Tim, <laughs> uh, decided that we wanted to do something and we're going to do London to Paris with Prevent Breast Cancer. Well, listen, and it's so good to see you so well. Is it seven years on? Seven years in October. And Great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, good luck with the bike ride um, and Thank lovely, you. lovely watching you and Corrie and say hi to all the cast from us. OK. Will Thank do. You, Thank Sally. you. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Sally. Hello, YouTube. For more of the same, just click here and don't forget you can subscribe for even more of these amazing videos exclusive to our channel. Being celibate and not ever putting out, it gives you a self-respect and a self-worth that only you can give you, if that makes sense. So where guys would treat you like a sex object or they would um, want stuff from you, and, um, and actually being celibate, that really, that really did weed out the good guys from the bad guys.